15 million people at risk of starvation. Yemen has always been one of the poorest countries on the planet. They've always been battling hunger. But due to the recent crisis, it would now take 20 years for them to even restore Yemen to its pre-crisis state of child hunger. 20 years! And that would still make it a country in need, a country with hunger and a country that is one of the most poor in the entire world. The country has had a cholera outbreak that started in 2016 and it has since been the biggest cholera outbreak in history. Between 2016 and October 2018, 2,500 people had died from the cholera outbreak and almost 60% of these were children. There has since been another 1,500 people who have passed away from cholera and the outbreak is still rife in Yemen now. According to the United Nations, there's been a 63% increase of gender-based violence against women since the conflict began. I wanted to talk about Islamophobia in this video. The Muslim religion is the second largest religion in the world. It is also the second largest in the UK. And in London, there are areas where 50% of the inhabitants follow the Muslim religion. In Britain alone there are nearly 3.5 million Muslims which equates to almost the entire population of Wales. Yet a report in 2018 found that one in three people believe that Islam threatens the British way of life. 44% consider Islam to be a serious threat to Western civilization, and 18% hold extremely negative views about the Muslim religion and people who follow the Muslim faith, with only 32% of people believing that Islam and the British way of life are compatible. A meta-analysis of 345 British news articles between 2000 and 2015 found common themes when reporting on Muslims included migration, war and terrorism. The five most common adjectives when reporting about Muslims in British media were radical, fanatical, fundamentalist, extremist and militant. Another study examined over 10,000 news articles from Britain leading up to 2018 and they found that 37% of them would be classed as very biased when reporting on Muslims. A further 59% associated Muslims with negative behaviour in the articles. Over a third of articles misrepresented or generally about Muslims and the most common theme in these articles was terrorism. Here is an example of some articles. Articles include things such as Muslim loonies hijack election, Ramadan a ding dong, Muslim plot to kill Pope, Christianity under attack, Brit kids forced to eat halal school dinners, Muslims tell British go to hell, Muslim thugs aged just 12 in knife attack on Brit schoolboy, BBC puts Muslims before you and a newspaper covering where they are trying to ban hijabs. This is sensationalist media coverage. These articles are extremely disrespectful, they are extremely rude and they are extremely biased. So what is the link between the Muslim religion and terrorism? Well, there isn't one. There is portrayal in British media that terrorism is, if not always, linked to the Muslim religion. However, the Muslim religion is a peaceful religion and anyone who is committing terrorist acts or who is part of an extremist group are not part of the Muslim faith. They may use the religion in order to gain members and gain support and able to convince people that what they're doing is right who follow that same religion. However, they are not religious. Terrorist groups are political more than they bear any relevance to religion and their aim is to gain power, money, land and other possessions. Also 95% of terrorism occurs in the Middle East, South Asia and Africa therefore it is not us who need to fear people in our own country it is other countries who are fearful and who need our help. Al-Qaeda for example which is run by the Bin Laden family has taken advantage largely of the Yemeni civil war and has been infiltrating Yemen since this war began. They are not religious, they are an extremist group, they are separate to the ongoing civil war and they are targeting Yemen and people in Yemen for their own gain of power and land and money and possessions. The Muslim religion is peaceful and the five pillars of Islam which are noted as the five things to practice in the religion include being faithful to God, going on a pilgrimage to Mecca and also giving money to those who are less fortunate than yourself. There is no mention of anything that is not peaceful, there is no mention of war, of terror. 
this is a peaceful religion and the majority of Yemen is a Muslim based country but this has nothing to do with why they are fighting. The people in Yemen who are suffering are just as worthy, are just as important and are just as significant as the people here in the UK. Irrespective of their faith or the country in which they have been born. The sooner that people realise that the conflict in Yemen is being largely fuelled by the UK and the US who are back in Saudi Arabia's regime and who are supplying them with arms and realise that if the UK and the US pulled out of their arms deal that the war would quickly dissipate, the sooner people will protest for and will donate for Yemen. And that's the reason that I wanted to talk about this. It seems very often the case of out of sight, out of mind, but with Yemen we can't do that anymore. The country is collapsing, people are dying, a child is dying every 10 minutes and the whole thing is only getting worse. Irrespective of their religion, irrespective of their beliefs, irrespective of how far away they may live from you and me, they are still people and they still need help and we need to stop being Islamophobic, we need to stop this us and them mentality between non-religious or Christians and Muslim religion because it's not okay. If you are able to donate anything, even if it's just a pound, every penny and every pound counts and this country really needs our help. This country is struggling the most of any country in the world. They are suffering the most of any country in the world. They are dying more than any country in the world. So please, if you can donate, that would be amazing. Today is day 8 and the time is currently 9.28. Reese is currently cooking a fry up for us very kindly so that's what we're eating tonight so I am very very excited. Today has been an okay day. Um, I edited the video that I've posted today which I posted on Friday. It's episode 3 in the fasting series so if you haven't watched it then check it out. And yeah I'm really looking forward to this fry up. Um, I watched a programme as well this afternoon which was on BBC and it was loosely related to Yemen. It was about a father who had basically kidnapped his children and taken them there away from their mum who was living here. But the main thing was actually seeing a family who is living in Yemen, who has lived in Yemen because they ended up moving back over here and hearing them talk about the conditions. Um, there was a lot of footage of where they were living once the war had broke out in 2005. 15. They had no water, they had no electricity, they had a small room for a kitchen and then they had a room where the four children, the mum and dad would sleep and the children all looked quite emaciated, they were all very skinny and the dad said it was the biggest stress and the biggest worry for him trying to find work, trying to have enough money to feed the family. And yeah, like I would say it really hit home for me even more than it ever has before because it just hearing first hand accounts about what it's like to actually live there from someone who's left and also footage of inside their home and things. Um, yeah, I mean, I've watched plenty of videos on YouTube and things, but because this was like a full documentary, you really got to have a lot more insight into one particular family. So it just really hit home to me and it hit hard. And as well, where they were living, it was all because where they were originally, where they had a home, it was completely blown up and they were lucky to get out. And that's why they were living in this really tiny house um yeah it was just really I, I mean I'm about to have a fry up now but I really am I'm starting to feel even eating at half nine to half two I'm starting to feel a bit guilty about what I'm eating I'm starting to worry about even showing the video because I don't want anything that I'm doing or anything I'm eating or anything to come off as insensitive I kind of feel like I should be eating um differently I should be eating more sort of basic like like I should be relating more to food that's available to people who are really poor um, so yeah I don't know maybe I should have done that I do feel a bit guilty that I'm having really nice food and things it's a difficult one I'm trying to do a good thing I'm trying to raise money but it just really is hitting home to me that in this country we really are very individualistic the focus is always very much on your own self your own person and 
our whole lifestyles we just are completely wrapped up in them we're completely wrapped up in what is going on right now where we are and it's very hard for people I think to see out into the wider world and actually realize that it's going on because if it's not right in front of you or it's not happening to someone that you know then basically it isn't happening in your own head but it really is happening and it really is horrible and yeah it's just it's I, I just wish I could do more really than what I am doing um I have even looked into could I go over and help in Yemen but it doesn't really seem feasible and I am going back to university shortly which again I feel I feel like should I be doing that or should I be going out and helping and doing more things in these countries that really need help I, I don't want to just be wrapped up in my own head and in my own life and like not thinking about or caring or helping helping those people that really need it. Yeah, I really am sort of analysing myself as a person. I'm analysing our society and things as I'm going through this and it really is enlightening and in some positive ways and also in negative ways. But I am really glad that I'm doing this, that I'm on this journey, you could say. Um, and yeah, I just really hope it keeps going well. Thank you so much to everyone who has already donated. And if you think you could donate, then the link is in the description as always. That would be absolutely amazing because they literally need over a billion pounds to rectify what has happened in that country so as much as I'm so happy and I'm so grateful for what we've raised and I never think I'm going to raise a billion or a million or anything like that just the more that we can raise the better in the long run because it can go towards that fund and it can really help. This is what we are about to eat I am so lucky to have this it is looking amazing and thank you so much Reese for making it. You're welcome. Yes, very, very lucky. Thank you. Just to prove the time I'm eating it is 9.39 p.m. For the time is 20 past one. Already hungry again. This isn't very healthy at all. There's some chicken and some broccoli and sweet corn to try and make it a bit healthier. And I'm going to look for some traditional foods that people eat during Ramadan. I am also going to look for some traditional Yemeni food. So hopefully I can make some of that um, over this week. And yeah, that might actually help me if I'm eating a little bit healthier. So fingers crossed I find some stuff. So today is Saturday and it is day nine today. Last night I found out that um, Weatherspoons, where I worked part time before lockdown because then I was shielding with my mum that they needed me to come and work. I was going to be working from the end of next week but some of their staff are off ill so I'm going in today. So I'm working four till twelve. Um, obviously that's right over when I should be eating at half nine so I have told my manager and said please can I have a break at about half nine tonight because I need to eat something and then when I come back at 12 I'll still have time to eat something else so so long as I manage to get that break and it isn't too busy everything should be fine um, but yeah I am a bit nervous about like how it's gonna be actually working and things as I say I know most people who do Ramadan and of course people who have no choice in not being able to eat most of those people are carrying on working day in day out but I just obviously haven't done that until today so I am a little bit nervous but fingers crossed it all goes well and at least I'll be busy and yeah I just hope that I get to have food at half nine and then I'll come home and have some more food the weather's lovely so I'm enjoying it a little bit before I go to work so it's five to ten I'm in work I've come up to eat I've got the Alfredo pasta and I also got some chicken strips to eat because I'm really hungry because it's been really busy so yeah let's go so today is day 10 and it feels super exciting I don't know why because it's kind of in the middle of week one and week two but like day 10 I can't believe that I have reached double figures that this is the 10th day um, it's gone very very fast and huh, fast literally um, but yeah I have been feeling really good about it all day today and not only that incredibly we have now reached 598 pounds so I genuinely when I put it up to 600 from 500 I was thinking I'm asking a bit too much here it won't go up at all but amazingly it has gone up to what is basically 600 pounds 
pounds and again I am just beyond grateful I wish I had more words to say thank you with but yeah I am so happy and appreciative and again I will be increasing it to 700 because why not let's go let's get as much money as we can because it's none of it is going to go to waste it's all for Yemen and yeah it's all going to help and it's all for Islamic relief to use for Yemen and last night I got in I was really tired after working so basically I had a crisp butty I know not healthy at all um that was all I really had oh and a cupcake <laughs> yeah not healthy at all um today i've not been to the supermarket we were gonna go and then forgot that everywhere closes at four so that's now going to be tomorrow i found two things that i want to eat that are traditional yemeni food that also are eaten often during ramadan um one is sort of a breakfast lunch type meal and the other is a dessert i thought why not um the dessert includes dates as well which um a member of islamic relief has recommended to me as being really helpful when you're fasting so I will be going and getting those things tomorrow and then I'll be eating them during this week so tonight I'm not really sure what I'm going to be eating it's already half eight but there isn't really much in the house I don't know whether to pop to the local spa and just pick up a few bits and just wing it tonight um or what really but yeah hopefully I find something <laughs> So it is now 20 to 10 and I am not good with portion sizes. I have way too much veg, way too much mash and way too much pulled pork but I will give it a good go. I did pick up the pulled pork from the shop because we literally have nothing in um, but I mean it's okay to have a lot of veg I suppose. It's good for you but these I can't eat too much but I am quite hungry right now so yeah I'll do my best. The time is 2.04 I've just got some tomato soup and bread tonight. I've kind of absent-mindedly been eating snacks more than any other night tonight so I'm not very hungry and yeah I think I've had all my calories that I needed already but the fact that I'm still awake and up anyway I just thought it's worth having something now um hopefully it'll help with tomorrow um it's not too big really and I'll just eat what I want of it so this is the end of day 10 and thank you so so much for watching this video i will see you on friday for the next video which will show days 11 12 13 and 14. bye